Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How is everyone doing today? I'm just getting some final stuff set up over here. We have a slightly bit of a different format for today's. I have these new watercolors that I have just really been wanting to play around with, um, and I have not had the chance, but because I, I really want to get to know them, uh, these were a little treat that I got myself when I was in Spain. They are Rembrandt watercolors, and they are artist quality, so normally I I don't really care about that, but uh, my friend Natasha from The Mightier Pencil uses Rembrandt often, and I really trust her opinions, so I, I did treat myself to these as my little present. Uh, so I want to swatch these, and I want to talk about why it's a good idea to actually get to know your paints a little bit while we're doing this. So what I recommend doing, if you want to follow along with me, obviously you won't have the same colors I do. Uh, see, they are fresh. I have not used them at all. Uh, but grab whatever watercolors you have that maybe you know the least about to follow along with this. Or even a set where you really use them a ton, but you only use a couple colors from within that range because we might get to know and you might find a new favorite in doing something like this. While everyone is getting started and getting set up, let me know where are you joining from today? Also, we're gonna be doing this two ways. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a quick swatch for my reference so I know which color is which. I have pre-labeled all the colors that are here. Um, and then we're going to do a more non-traditional swatch so we're going to do one of my sketchbook exercises in this using each of these colors so we can play around with them um, and that way you don't have to like make a grid you know like making a grid can be kind of fun if you if you're in a methodical mood but sometimes when you want to swatch stuff you're like I want to play more than I want to just swatch <laughs> hello hello to everyone We've got people from all over. Hi Tim, how are you today? In case people don't know Tim, he is one of my favorite craft buddies. Uh, he does really fun little craft things. I actually, I still have this um, that I made last year. This was one of his crafts. It's a little clothespin butterfly. How fun is that? <laughs> Oh my goodness, everybody is from everywhere. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna get started. For this, I'm gonna need, I've got my spray bottle because I need to wet my paints. I've got some cups of water. I'm gonna grab whatever my favorite watercolor brush is. And we're gonna start by spritzing these so that they have a chance to kind of get activated. Whenever you're testing new watercolors, it's always a good chance or a good idea to actually wet them because you're going to be able to get a lot more pigment. It's going to activate them and then you'll get a better idea of how they actually work. So let me grab my favorite brush. I think today I'm, I've been using my size 4 quill brush a lot lately so I'm going to do that and I'm just going to make sure it's clean by washing it. So uh, for those of you who are brand, brand new, also, this is a set of dried watercolors or a pan set. When you are using them, you're going to take a clean but damp brush. You're going to pre-wet your paints, and then you can just tap your brush onto these. If you're just trying to get one single color and not mix anything up, you'll just tap your brush on, and then you can just swipe it right onto the paper. And that's how you're going to get that. So my first color is a cadmium yellow light and I'm kind of intrigued by this set normally I avoid all the cadmium colors because cadmium is um, you know it's one of those 
things where you don't, you want to make sure you're not touching it too much because it's not great for you. <laughs> and this one actually has quite a few CAD colors. Let's get a little gradient just so we have an idea. Lemon yellows are usually the brightest and lightest. They're also typically kind of an opaque color, so that means they actually cover a bit more. That is a beautiful lemon yellow. I love it. Next up, we have yellow light. My favorite yellow is actually a um, permanent yellow deep. This is pretty, though. I'm going to wash my brush and get a bit of a gradient, because that's usually what I'm interested in seeing, how it looks when it kind of spreads out. Washing my brush again. The next one is Azo Yellow Light. We're gonna try to, I'm going to try to swatch through these in this way fairly quickly uh, so that we can get to the more fun exercise. Ooh, I like this one. Notice that this one, it almost looks kind of brown, but then if we wash our brush with just water in there and pull it down, look at how bright of a yellow. This is the thing that I love to see in different watercolors, where in a more concentrated fashion, it's gonna look kind of almost like one color, and then when we pull it out and add more of that transparency in there, we almost see a different color. Next is gamboge, and I'm curious because I have another gamboge and it does not <laughs> look like this color that's in the pan. It almost, this looks more like a brown in the pan, so we'll see how it actually looks um, on the page. But we're gonna see. I'm also curious to know, of those who are joining today, how many people are swatching your colors? And let me know um, what brand you're kind of experimenting with today. We're going to be doing a fun sketchbook exercise in a little bit. Okay, this is another one that looks like it's going to have that fun effect where if I pull that out, we get a bright yellow color or it's brown if it's more concentrated. How interesting. I didn't miss the third one. third one's right here. This one's the fourth, the gamboge. Did I? Oh no. Oh no. You're right. You're totally right. Oh, and that's a beautiful color. Okay, we're gonna have to replace that over here. Thank you guys for catching that. Okay. All right, I will, um, I'll put this over this one. <laughs> See, this is, this is why uh, I gotta do this with an audience so that I actually don't miss something. I got really excited about the other one, I guess. <laughs> this is gorgeous. This is almost more of kind of an orangey color. I'll be curious to see what color this one dries as, but this is actually the Azo Yellow Light. There we go. <laughs> Using Andrea's 24. Nice. Okay. All right. Now I'll start counting. So we need to be on the fifth one. So one, two, three, four, five. This one is cadmium orange. I've tried other cadmiums, but mainly with the red. So I'll be curious to see. These are so far, they are beautifully creamy. Now these are, this is probably the nicest set of watercolors that I own currently. Um, these are artist quality. And so they should be, when you buy artist quality paints, you should expect a nice consistency. You should be expecting um, a really high level of pigmentation. Uh, and yeah, like when you buy artist quality paints, you should be expecting that. These are Rembrandt. Oh, Beam Paints, I look at their paints all the time. They look, they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I, I have not tried their paints, but I do really like how they package them too. Okay, now we're on the six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to Cad Red. And Cad Red is usually a really pretty bright color, kind of almost usually reminds me of like a vermilion type color where there's almost a little bit of orangey undertones. 
Again, I don't typically use cadmium red just because there are lots of other really beautiful reds and I actually don't usually paint with a lot of red to begin with. I prefer to swap that out for a pink and then I mix up my reds, um, but that's just my personal preference. Absolutely gorgeous. Also, I love that effect that that had when it comes down, kind of those little tendrils. This set was pre-established, so I bought this, it came in a box, and it came with these 24 colors. Okay, now we're on the seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right here. All right, it's next to the Cad Red, and now we are in Cadmium Red Deep. Let's see. This is a creamy color, beautiful. This reminds me of like an old Hollywood red lip kind of a color. This one looks like this is gonna be pretty opaque and have a ton of coverage. So if you layered it, you could actually kind of like block out different colors. I mean, if you used it uh, real thick, that's what it would do. We might have to test some of these on some black paper too, just to, just to see what happens. All right, Permanent Matter Lake. Uh, now, typically I prefer more magenta or more um, pink type colors. So these next two are the most excited about. So this is the Permanent Matter Lake. So we're still in kind of the red, but see how it's a slightly cooler version of red? Put a little water on my brush and let's pull that down. You can kind of see almost some of the purple undertones that are coming out down here. And then this is quinacridone rose. Now I'm curious because quinacridone magenta is my favorite color of watercolor, but um, this will be kind of a close color. Now one of the questions in the comments is, do I prefer this format of watercolor or tubes of paint? Um, I, when I first started, I really liked tube, tubed watercolors, um, and I still like them quite a lot, but I have kind of really grown to prefer these dried pans, um, because they're more convenient as well as I have, uh, as I've had to like recommend things to people, I have done some testing and in general, I have found that there is less quality difference between different pan sets. And so I feel more confident when I'm talking to people. I've bought tubes that have just quality issues and watercolor is not cheap. And I, I don't love recommending things that I don't have a great deal of confidence um, that are gonna work for you guys. I need to spray this one a bit more. So to me, it's a bit safer to, to talk about these as well as they're just, I don't know, they're more they're easier to find typically. But that being said, tubes of watercolor, you can take a tube of watercolor and then use it to mix colors up. This is mauve or mauve. Oh, wow. Ooh, okay, this is gorgeous. Um, you can take tubes of watercolor, they can do both. So you can actually kind of pre-fill your own set. Okay, look at that. That's like a firework happening. Can't stop watching that. Okay. <laughs> the next we have Ultramarine Deep. Normally I use uh, just Ultramarine, although Ultramarine is probably my least favorite of the blues. Uh, I My favorite is a phalo blue. All right, let's see. Ultramarine Deep. Pretty color. I mean, this is my own personal weird thing where Ultramarine just, it never wows me. I think it's a really pretty color. I just feel like we were rooting for you. You could have been great. Um, yeah, but look at this one. I am in love with this color here. Wow, wow, wow. So right now I'm currently working on Canson, which is a cellulose paper. Um, it's more of a cheap paper, but is usually kind of where I start with things um, because it's cheap or relatively cheap compared to other watercolor options. 
Next up we have cobalt. And let's see, beautiful color. Cobalt is often a little more opaque. Um, also, ultra, ultramarine is usually pretty granulating, which I do like when colors granulate, but it looks like very, this one's very granulating. Can you see how it's separating into the little folds of the paper? So it is grainy, yeah. So um, let's talk about that. This is why we test things, because different colors are going to have different effects. So notice that this one here is not really a gr granulating color. It's more of a smooth appearance, whereas this is a granulating watercolor. And ultramarines are typically pretty granulating. That's that's This is pretty typical of an ultramarine. And that's just where the pigment particles, they like to like settle down and kind of separate, and then they fall into the texture of the paper. Whereas you can't see the texture of the paper so much in some of these. See, this one's partially granulating a little bit, uh, not really not really and then for the yellows not really any of the yellows but these two for sure both very granulating and having a watercolor that's granulating or not granulating isn't good or bad it just is different and it's going to really depend on what you like so here are i did not double up this one i know i didn't double up because these are these are different in person i can see the difference uh, right? Let's let's hear from the, the replay people. <laughs> I know it looks like I doubled up, but this one is lighter. So the brush for very, very beginners I recommend is finding a, uh, do I have one here? Finding a round brush. This is one I sell, um, but it's a size 12 round brush. And let me get it wet. This one's an older one. <laughs> Um, but it's got a nice, they, finding one that has a nice point, I also recommend getting one with synthetic bristles, and there are a couple different brands that do this, but look for something that has synthetic bristles and then a nice point on it. But a size 10 or 12 is going to be really good for beginners because I find that it has a little bit of movement, but not so much that you're overwhelmed by it. Okay, I did it right, good. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to the other side, and I'm trying to go quickly through this so we can do the fun exercise. But I am I'm, I'm also having fun doing this. <laughs> I'm going to set this one to the side. Next up, we've got a Prussian blue. Now, next to phalo blue, Prussian blue is my second favorite blue. So we're getting a little bit more into the colors that I actually like as far as blues. So we will see. Let's bring this into frame. Oh, yeah. I love a, I love a Prussian blue. There is something, there's just, to me, ultramarine is is typically kind of a one-note color, but phalo blue or Prussian blue, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the video super well, but there's like some life to that color, whereas this one to me is like, I do like the granulating effects for certain things, but to me there's just kind of this extra little oomph to it. Oh, you say Prussian blue is hard to work with? Huh. I haven't... I don't know if I've really experienced that. I'd be curious to know um, what you find or what's been difficult. I mean, it also depends on how you work. Here's Cerulean. Hmm. This one, this is the first, yeah, there's a couple colors that I'm a little underwhelmed with. The cobalt and the cerulean, I, I have some other ceruleans that are way prettier than this. It stains everything, oh, yeah. Yeah, that would, that is, that is a trick, tricky thing. <laughs> Next up we have Viridian. Hmm. That is not my favorite. I, I typically like Viridian. Now, I'm curious to see the pigment on Viridian is, I think, 616. Let me look at a different Viridian I have in my drawer. If I can find it. Okay. 
Yeah, this is different. This, this one's viridian hue. So, um, yeah, I typically like this viridian hue, but this is a different pigment number. So, it's just different. This would be really pretty... Um, I don't love this color, but do you see how it's settling out? And this is a beautiful color for like a seascape or something. And then even the texture of the paper is doing some of the work for the texturing if you were trying to paint um, the sea. Can I explain? How I, I, been, I am not probably the best person to ask about water. Um, it is pretty difficult. We did do a... Uh, lesson on water on painting water in my patreon and we talked about different techniques and there is a replay uh, if you are part of the patreon that you can see permanent green wow this is stunning i typically mix my own greens because like except for olive green i do like an olive green or more of a that kind of color but this like bright green it's usually hard to find a green that is that bright and that is stunning oh the three colors yeah let's talk about this lauren i love that you brought this up so lemon yellow deep opera rose and prussian blue are yours mine would be yeah uh, permanent yellow deep quinacridone magenta and phala blue those would be my three colors. They're, those are the ones that I use all the time. Okay, sap grains. So we're on the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Okay, I was right. This is beautiful too. No, I do not oil paint. I do acrylic, watercolor, um, pottery. We're on hooker green deep. In the past, I've done a lot of charcoal drawing. I also did quite a bit of silversmithing for quite a while. Oh wow, this is be their greens are knocking it out of the park. Usually, I'm I especially with starting with Viridian, I was like, mm, I'm gonna be disappointed. But the greens are beautiful. These are Rembrandt. Oh, I love corn on the cob for my unicorn set. Yes. That is that is one of my favorites, too. Actually, usually corn on the cob um, and then watermelon, sugar, and uh, what is it? I'm trying to rock or oh my gosh, why can I not remember the name? There's a blue that I use and I have to refill those all the time. All right, yellow ochre. Ooh, I've got some. I'm going to try to pick up some of this water I accidentally sprayed. This is their, their professional quality. My favorite yellow for, like, if you're going to buy a tube of yellow is permanent yellow deep. Yellow ochre. Although it, it also depends on the brand, because my favorite brand and color of that is uh, Shin Han. <laughs> All right, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is another one of my favorites. Um, sometimes I'll even swap my yellow out for a yellow ochre instead of using um, like a permanent yellow deep. So I'm usually pretty picky about these. This one is, uh, this one's okay. It's a little bit lighter than I would like it to be. I like when, um, Yellow ochres have a little more kind of robustness. This feels lighter. All right, burnt sienna. If I only had one brown, it would probably typically be a burnt sienna as well. This one also feels like it's gonna be, mm, okay. The one thing to keep in mind that with tube paints instead of Oh, that one's kind of, my water's getting pretty dirty. With tube paints, you can build your own custom set because each brand is going to have their strengths and their weaknesses. And I feel like we can kind of see that across this set. Like this, I have I have uh, multiple burnt siennas that I think are more robust and vibrant and I think.
Watching from Brazil, hello. So yeah, these ones are, these were expensive. I bought these in, when I was in Spain, these were my like little present to myself. Uh, so yeah, 115 sounds about right. These are the nicest <laughs> watercolors that I personally own. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to actually swatch them so I don't like just let them go to waste. Cause I am curious about them. I would like to do some paintings with them. Um, this one's burnt umber. This one is pretty. And also, like, I just want to be really transparent about... These were ones I bought for myself in a cute little art store in Spain. And um, you do not have to have super duper nice watercolors to do anything that I do. You know, start where you are. You don't have to spend all your money. This is just... This was my souvenir. What, what I bought to bring back home with me. Because this is definitely my interest, you know? Okay, now we've got greenish umber. I am really curious about this one. I have some umbers and they are typically pretty boring to me. Movie has a lot to say. <laughs> I don't know what she's barking at upstairs. This one is pretty. It's a little bit gray. I would describe this as like a taupe type color. This is cold pressed paper, but this is cellulose. All right, next we've got sepia. And this is, we've got two more colors and then we're gonna do a fun exercise to kind of explore a different way. Oh, oh, I like this. This color is one of those ones that I feel like has like kind of two levels to it where it's one color, but there's like almost something shining through it. And I'm really, I'm really kind of drawn to colors like that. All right, I think I gotta go check what's going on upstairs. Let me get this. I will be right back. My dog is going crazy. <laughs> That was just a package, no big deal. <laughs> okay, so now that we have an idea of all the colors, um, we're gonna explore, this is one way you could do a swatch. Um, sometimes I do like grid-like swatches where I'll actually test different effects, but let's do one where we get to just kind of play and go with it. So I was using today uh, Canson XL, and it's just a cellulose cold press paper, 140 pound, this is pretty cheap, like, I mean, relative, again. <laughs> um, this is usually what I recommend for beginners because especially with a pad like this, you can buy one of these for like 12 bucks. It's got 30 sheets and then you can cut it up into a whole bunch. The last color, yeah, this one is really pretty too. See, this one's granulating, but in a different way. Um, but I recommend that one because it's robust enough to actually like not warp way too much. And I think it works pretty well, especially for the value. I'm going to switch over though to, this is one of my little watercolor journals that I sell. And this has 140 pound paper as well. It's cold pressed, so it has some nice texture, but this one is cotton paper. So it is going to act a little bit different. The gray and the Prussian are your favorites. Yeah, if I had to choose that sap green, I really like too. Look at that one. Prussian is gorgeous. That mauve, okay. So what we're gonna do next, let me find one of my little, my notebook that has the sample of this. Oh my goodness. So, it's in my Phyllis sketchbook. Thank 
yeah, what color I would, um, watercolors. You know, I, I, I tend to avoid answering that question, especially on lives, because I'm kind of weird about it, and I don't know why, but I do sell my own watercolors, and I do recommend them, um, but I do have, I don't offer international shipping, and since so many people on lives are international, um, I tend to try to avoid that. I do, but I do like those. Also, Koi is another good one, kind of depending on where you're at. Um, Windsor Newton is decent for some beginners. You can buy a smaller set. I have not tried the Van Gogh ones, though. Uh, actually, or did I get some Van Gogh ones? I don't remember. I need to, I need to try more of the beginner type sets so that I can make some recommendations, especially for the international folks. <laughs> um, not only that, but like, we're here to learn together. I don't know, I don't, I don't love pushing product, which is probably not smart, but <laughs> it, this is kind of my time to relax and like hang out with you guys and, and do things. So what we're gonna do is I wanna do this, which is like a kind of a mosaic inspired puzzle kind of thing. Um, but we're going to do it with individual colors initially, uh, just so that we can kind of see, so that you can see like a different way of potentially swatching. So what we're going to do is you could do this on one single sheet of paper. You could do this in the notebook, however you want to do it. I'm just going to go through all those colors again. Um, and you know what I should do is I should go, I should go get myself some new water because man, look at these. <laughs> I even, was able to get a little extra water, but these ones are dirty. So I'm gonna start again with some fresh water. I'll be right back. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna make a mosaic and kind of explore and maybe try to push the boundaries of some of these colors, maybe by adding some um, blooms and things like that. Oh, Lauren, that means so much. I'm so glad. That's my entire goal. All right. So I'm just going to start to make sure my colors are, are wet so that I can just make these little shapes. So we're going to start with this lemon yellow. And let me get my little tail. <laughs> I'm going to tuck this in here so that it doesn't go everywhere. And I think I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to kind of work this way down. And we can make any shape because we're, we're channeling making a mosaic piece. And when you break pottery, it can make all sorts of shapes. So I'm going to start with kind of an outline. Then I'm going to wash my brush and let's just put water in the middle. So that's gonna give us a little bit of that kind of gradient effect. And I'm also gonna make sure I leave quite a bit of water. It's gonna be harder to see on this color. Um, let's see if we can find a reflection for you guys to see. There you are. See how there's some extra water in there that's kind of swirling around? So I'm gonna kind of encourage there to be some backgrounds because different colors are going to do backgrounds in different ways. And this will kind of help us see it. And then I'm gonna move on to the next yellow and I'm just gonna fit this in. Just fit it in wherever I want. Maybe this one's gonna be a little triangle. Also going to wash my brush on this one. And let's try to get it to be a little bit lighter in the center. Okay. That is a pretty color. Okay, now this one, I'm gonna get the third one. <laughs> and on this one, I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna add in one of those little spaces where I am um, adding in kind of the little pieces, but we'll add more and more water to the brush as we go. So I'm gonna put a little water in my brush. This is a little 
maybe over here, we'll put a little more water in the brush so we can see a little bit of how it's going to be. Okay. I guess maybe I'm going to put a little more in because I think I'm just going to go off the page with this one. This is also doing an exercise like this for swatching is also going to give you an idea of how the, they really work kind of in a more real painting session. Um, you could start mixing some of these colors together. I'm going to st I'm starting by kind of trying to understand just in general how they work uh, on their own. And also by placing them all kind of together in one piece, you might really be able to start to see where your favorites are and the ones that you're going to want to be reaching for. Okay, let's add in. So now I'm on the fourth color. Let's go for kind of a weird shape. Wash my brush. I'm trying to get a little variation in the color on these. It's going to be a little less obvious on the yellows in general. Also, I am really curious. So this is Gambage, which does have some really beautiful yellow, but it is so orange. I'm always kind of curious why they wouldn't swap almost these two colors, because I feel like this one should be closer to the yellow or the orange. But maybe it actually has to do with the pigment numbers, which is probably what it is. No, no. Because I was thinking it was maybe the pigment numbers, but it's not. They're definitely not all in a perfect order. It is interesting because even when I am designing my little sets of watercolors, trying to choose what colors go next to them, it makes sense in my brain. But who knows if it makes sense in anybody else's brain. You know what? I'm going to have this one go off the page. I'm tired of avoiding the edges, so we're just going to go with it. I do really like this color. Makes me a little bit, <laughs> makes me a little bit mad because um, it is a cadmium color and I try to, try to stay away from those, but it's beautiful. The other thing you can test out while you're doing these individual colors is that lifting. See how well you can actually kind of lift it off the page which could create a little more kind of depth and interest. Maybe we'll incorporate that into some of these other ones that are still wet. Let's try to lift a little bit here. Doesn't lift quite as well. That one lifts okay, but I think this one might be a bit staining. I don't think that this one is though. Keeping the paper from pilling is all about just not overworking it, and if you need to keep working on an area, let it dry, and then go on top. Be gentle. But it could also be the paper you're working with. You know, one of the things that, like, I love helping troubleshoot, but it can be really frustrating um, to troubleshoot because I just, I just don't have enough information. Like, I don't know for sure what paper you're using or um, how hard you're pushing on your, your brush or like I can speculate to a lot of things. <laughs> Putting some water in that. Okay. That the reds are great too in this set. I will say I, there are a couple colors, the burnt, the yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber are very ho-hum to me as well as that Viridian. But a lot of these other colors are stunning. Oh, the cobalt teal or cobalt blue is also not my super favorite. But these are all also, you know, my personal opinions. It doesn't mean they're not good, especially if you like them. All right. We're all allowed to have different opinions on what we like. especially when it comes to art supplies. It is funny because, yeah, one of my, I mean, I really want to be able to help um, people with art supply suggestions, but it is one of the hardest things that I have to do because, you know, I don't know what your access to supplies is. I don't know what your budget is. <laughs> and 
so good supplies are going or even how you work because some people like to work in different ways where a different supply is going to be better for you So I have been in love with quill brushes for almost a year now. Um, and they hold more water. I do recommend them for, if you're brand, brand new to watercolor, a quill brush is gonna be a little overwhelming because it holds a ton of water and it moves a lot more. Uh, not only that, but the price point is higher on quill brushes. They're more something that I recommend. Once you're like, okay, I like watercolor, I'm, I'm hooked, then that is a great time to then invest in something like a quill brush. But I, I usually like to start with, you really only need one brush with watercolor, which is a round brush. Let's make these a little bit lighter. I'm trying to get some of those areas where you fit things in. I'm also starting to be a little cognizant of the fact that I still have a couple more colors and I've already fit half the page. Um, I recommend synthetic bristles because I think they've got, I like the way that they move for beginners. I think they're very manageable. Not only that, but um, you don't have to be as careful. Like the care of a synthetic brush is not as difficult to do. Um, they're usually cheaper. And then you can use this little hot water trick to kind of give them a little more life. You know, if you're starting an art form, the last thing you want to do is like burden yourself with, okay, now I have to care for these brushes really carefully because they cost me a ton of money and I have to um, make sure that I do all these things to like set up myself for success. And like, I've got to wash the brush in a specific way. And I, I don't know, like beginners, we got to, at least for me, when I was a beginner, take away as many barriers as possible. Because every little barrier that you, you know, I, I put in front of myself at least, it was an excuse not to try something. And then I kept being like, well, you know, it, it's, I'm not, I shouldn't go paint because like, I, I don't know what I'm doing or I don't have all the right supplies or. So yeah, that's why I say synthetic. And then I recommend for a round brush is just a size 10 or a size 12 because the point on them is so fine. You can do fine detail work. Um, but if you get a size 10 or 12, then there will be enough where you can actually hold quite a bit of water. All right, we're going to go into this cobalt blue over here. They do look surprisingly similar, <laughs> these two colors, the um, cobalt and that ultramarine, which typically I find those colors quite different. So that is a little bit surprising. Let's lift a little bit of that out. Just to get a little variation. Like I love the fact that different watercolors do this differently. See how we added some water and we lifted from these. And this one, it's kind of this soft cloudy, whereas this one, it's like, almost tentacly, like, and then you can start to think about, okay, well, this would be beautiful in some sort of a cloudy sunset. This might be really pretty in kind of a grassy foreground because some of the textures that it's going to make on its own are going to complement that. Yeah, uh, the preciousness with different supplies. I will say my, my, um, main recommendation for when you are purchasing art supplies is use the art supplies that you know or buy the art supplies that you know you're going to use so exactly that if you're like okay if I buy this really nice one I know myself I'm going to put it on a shelf and I'm going to wait until I'm good enough to use it well if you do that 
well, you can't, can't get good enough to use something if you never learn. So buy the paper. I mean, there are art teachers who will tell you you can only paint watercolor on arches or 100% cotton. Um, but that doesn't do you any good if you buy it and then it just sits on the shelf because you're like, well, every mistake I make is two or three dollars. Like that's really expensive and not sustainable for me. Some people that might be within their budget, but other people it might not. This color I am in love with. Love it. This cerulean, I did not love quite as much. Let's do it as some of the little, the little pieces. Let's put it over here. It is pretty when it's really, really thick. Or maybe I just don't like the effects it has as you kind of thin it a bit. This is kind of fun just doing the individual colors. Previously, I was doing multiple colors together um, in my previous ones, which are super fun to do, but it is kind of fun to make like a little rainbow across the page. Whoop, got a little drip. So anybody that's following along, have you learned anything interesting about your paints by kind of taking the time or any of the colors specifically to explore them? Is there anything that's kind of surprised you? Because there are certain colors in here that I would not reach for, like that sepia color. Probably not something that I would typically paint with, but there is something about that sepia color that is really beautiful. And I am now intrigued, whereas I, I might have just kind of ignored that on the palette without exploring it. How do you refresh the water if the things are dried weird? Yeah, you just keep spraying and you just swirl your brush around in them. <laughs> and they, they do just look kind of goofy. Like, uh, once I finish this... If somebody reminds me in the comments when we finish this one, because we're getting kind of close to finishing this one, uh, I can show you some of my older watercolors and, and how they look. And they still work, uh, but they just are not as pretty. With the colors like this, instead of it being mosaic, it kind of reminds me of like mosaic Tetris. <laughs> What does it mean when the color has the word hue in the name? You know, I I should look into that. I don't fully know um, exactly what that means. Um, I I know a decent amount about pigments and things like that, but I don't know. There are there are parts of it that do definitely escape me. <laughs> I feel like a. Natasha from the Mightier Pencil would, would maybe know the answer to that. She is the color queen. You have two very similar reds. I do think that that is interesting that, yes, some of the reds are um, very similar, and it's like you can really only see the difference when you kind of pull them out. Yes, this would this would totally make a good turtle shell. You're totally right. Okay, so I did that one. Did that one, right? So we have Viridian, that one, that one. Okay, so we're here. I'm trying to make sure I keep track.
So these are Rembrandt. These are um, these are their artist grade or professional quality ones that I recently picked up and they've just been sitting there because yeah, I am like, oh, they're too pretty. I can't do anything with them. Love this color too. This one is Prussian blue, yes. Oh, hello, Carla. Thank you. What is the first green? So this was Viridian, then this was Permanent, then this was Sap, and then this is uh, Hooker Green Deep. Next on to the Yellow Ochre. Although my brush, it looks like my brush was a little bit dirty. I think I'm going to do... I already know that this is not my favorite yellow ochre. It's okay. Mookie is barky. She says, you didn't walk me. I'm going to walk her after we get off here. <laughs> yeah, Windsor and Newton are good. They are... I don't know what it is. I've actually recently started to like some of the tubes of Windsor Newton. The, the pan paints have kind of, I also have more of a limited set of them and I just wasn't super wowed. Um, but these are a higher price point than Windsor Newton. So it's going to kind of depend on what you're looking for. I mean, I mainly paint with my unicorn food ones anymore or my handmade paints. They're, they're my go-to's. Um, but I am, I am definitely addicted to watercolors and, uh, I have, I have quite a collection growing. <laughs> I think it's so interesting to see. Like, with that ultramarine, was not my favorite, but look at that. It's a cloud. I have a, I mean, ultramarine is usually a pretty good lifter, but I feel like this would be really good. Maybe we'll do a little test, um, depending on how much battery I have. <laughs> um, but I'll show you this in a second, because I think it would be great for doing clouds. The neon, oh, the neons are my favorite, yes. And then, yeah, I've been playing around with gouache. Now, I don't, a lot, there are a lot of people who really like Windsor Newton, so my opinion might just be very different. Yeah, brand preference is super personal. Just looking at the comments real quick. Okay, we gotta I gotta finish this before the live too. Um, somebody asked about tips for, for growing followers, and I genuinely don't know. Uh, luck, have fun, and be yourself. Because <laughs> yeah, sometimes it just feels like. A lot of it is kind of luck. This one is one that I bought. Yeah, this is this was a present to myself. This is a professional grade quality one. I um I there I do have some professional quality paints, but most of mine are not professional quality. So this is my first like I feel like this is my, you know, first big girl <laughs> set of paints. So this is that sepia color that really surprised me. And something there is just something 
It kind of glows from within this color that I really like. This one was a big surprise. Well, thanks. Yeah, the nails are actually press on, so they come with fun designs, and I just I just pick fun ones that I can cut short. Here's that Payne's gray as well. Push I need some a little bit more precision here. There. Okay, this is super fun with the colors kind of all going together. There are a couple things that I do think I learned even beyond just the initial swatching. Um, I'm going to try to show you this real quick because my battery is getting kind of low, but I think we have enough time for this. That ultramarine, even though I was very like, mm, mm, I think it's going to be spectacular for clouds. So we're going to play around with that. I, this is the yellow that I would reach for if I'm doing foregrounds that have any sort of grassy colors because I have a feeling they would have really interesting blooming effects um, that would kind of mimic maybe some grass or bushes type of a thing. This one I am still very underwhelmed with. It is just okay. Do still really like this color. This is still kind of a surprise. And this burnt umber or it, well, greenish umber it's also really pretty. This would be a beautiful neutral to kind of play off some of these super bright colors. Like this color with this green and then that mauve could be a beautiful color palette together. Uh, the brush is actually my own brand. These are my quill brushes and I'm using a size four today. I love how much water it holds. Okay, so what we're gonna do is let me get you another piece of paper. We're gonna do a little bonus. A little, little bonus real quick. If you like to do lifting effects, by the way, Canson is probably the best paper for lifting. Um, if you like really like harsh lifting effects. Okay, next I'm gonna take this paper towel, scrunch it up and tear it. I want the natural edges of this fiber. If you just tap it like this to lift, you'll get some really neat patterns, but it won't really look like, I want mine to look more like clouds, so I'm gonna do it like this. Okay, so I am going to, let's try, my desk is getting full. Here we go. I'm gonna put a little water in here because I'm gonna need a little bit to cover. We're going to tap. This will only take us a second. Making this into a blue with a little more water so it's a little bit more transparent. Um, and But we'll have plenty to actually move across this. Maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to make a little square. I'm not being super careful about how I'm placing this down because what I want to do next is imagine you're painting the sky. You place this down, it's still wet, and then look at those clouds. Big, fluffy clouds. I mean, I need to, I should have had a little more plan, but like, ooh, high wind clouds. That blue is like perfect for this effect. Like, look how fun the clouds would be on with this color. And here I was totally not loving this blue, but to do a cloudy day with that blue would be perfect. All right, I think we're going to wrap up for today. Um, I think my, my main takeaway from today, oh, also, side note, Look how pretty the little water droplets that grab some of the color are <laughs> in there. My main takeaway I would love for you to take away is that it is, it's a great idea to just spend some time with your paints. You don't have to make something 
that is like absolutely stunning or perfectly thought out, just take some time to play. You're going to learn things. You might find a little inspiration as you go. You know, we did kind of talk about, well, the C, this could make some really interesting effects for the C, even though we don't love the color or, well, I don't love the color. <laughs> and you might be surprised at how many little ideas that doing something super simple, like just playing with your paints to get to know them, is going to create ideas and then also just help you understand how to use them better. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you got to paint and I'm so, I feel very special that you decided to paint with me. We do this every other week. Um, if you do like a, uh, an, if you like another one, I do have a Patreon and once a month we get together and we do it as like a Google Meet so that I can actually see what you guys are painting and you can ask correct questions directly and we decide what we're gonna be painting together um, in, a, in a little more collaborative type format. So if you do enjoy something like that, you can always check out my Patreon. Other than that, I hope everybody has an absolutely wonderful day. If you joined at the end of this and you're like, what were you doing? I will be posting this in a couple days to my YouTube channel um, so that there is, will be a replay in case anybody would like to watch this again. Thank you, thank you, and have a wonderful day.